I'm going to share right off the bat because I hate like the intro time beforehand. So I'm just going to get it going. Yeah. Um, all right. I am ready if you are. Let's go. Oof. It's bright. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. Uh, myself, TJ Pinger, back alongside Richie Barnes for another episode. And we've got a fun one again this week, Richie, uh, running the uh, FSU coaching gamut. We'll get to our guest in just a minute. But how are you doing this evening, bud? I'm doing good. I'm excited. I think this this might be our first national championship winning coach that we ha have on the podcast. So uh, I'm yeah. excited going through the Florida State coaches car wash. So uh, a lot of fun these past few weeks. Yeah, I know. They definitely have been a ton of fun. It's been great to get a lot of insight. And so I'll, I'll tell the for, for those watching and hanging out with us tonight, I see we've got a few people on here already. Uh, coach Lonnie Almeida, Florida State softball head coach, uh, national champion from 2018. Uh, I remember where I was when I watched this beat uh, beat Washington to, to win it all. So uh, can't wait to get her on and, and chat about that, and she'll be on in just a moment. One or you're you're also less distracted tonight. No, uh, no basketball game for you to like look up at at your at your <laughs> roof ceiling TV or whatever you got up there. Um, so anyway, Guthrie's in Tallahassee sponsors the show and brings you this show every week. You can visit both their locations at 1818 West Tennessee and 2550 North Monroe. You can check them out and go get a box double fries, no slaw. Um, let's get to our first guest. I'm super excited to have Coach Lonnie here with us today. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I love the uh, I love the subtle flex there the in the background. background. Right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm a big fan of the of the flex. Like I just have my you know uh, IKEA curtains behind me, but you have your uh, national championship. Yeah, right so, yeah. We always I, get you know the like pennants you get like when you win it, you get to hold it up. Have yeah. The team sign it, the staff, everyone. Yes. So it's pretty cool to go down memory lane. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, I'm telling you, there's a there's a little bit of pressure on you. Not necessarily tonight. We're pretty fun. We're pretty easy yeah. uh, on the like we just cut up and have a good time. Uh, but Coach Hamilton was on uh, two weeks ago. Since then, they've won three in a row. They beat number seven, UVA, by 21. Um, Coach Brooke came on a week ago, and then they just had upset number three, uh, Louisville. Mike Martin Jr. was on on Thursday. They are now ranked in the top ten after winning their opening series. So we're going to need you to continue to deliver for FSU. Yeah. You got a little bit of a break this week, but this weekend we got a series coming up. So I don't know. Pressure coming Maybe up. Maybe we should have booked last week so I could have kept the streak going against Va Tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's your guys' fault, dang it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, blam <laughs> I'm blaming our scheduling teams. Yeah, right. Um, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, we're super excited to have you on. I appreciate you um, for hanging out. I'll let Richie kick it off and we'll, we'll go yeah. from there. Yeah, coach, you know, last week we had uh, coach Wyckoff on and, you know, I wanted to ask her about filling in for a legend like coach Sue Samuel, uh just for this year. And, you know, she was obviously humbled and honored. You actually took over full time for a seminal legend. You know, my freshman year, coach jo Joanne Graff was was the head softball coach. I actually took a couple of her classes in sport management and she was coaching on a field named after herself. So when you found out you were taking over for her, was there any pressure to take over from a, you know, a seminal legend of her prestige like that? Um, no, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, you look to people like that have laid the path for you to have opportunity and you honestly want to respect and honor everything they've done, but they've also, um, given you the opportunity to create your own, um, ways to do things. So she was so great. We had, I had known her before. I mean, as most legendary coaches, as a younger coach, you get in the game and you know of them and you know of their programs. And so then, you know, we had lunch uh, that first week I got here and um, she gave me some things, you know, here's some dirt. Here's what you're working with. Um, here's how I did things. You know, you take it for what you want and you go, you go do your own thing. Like she was great about it. And uh, she's been a, a great supporter of the program. Uh, she's a financial contributor to the program. She's there for every alumni game, every alumni event. Um, she's a phone call away for anything that I need. And so um, I'm so grateful for her mentorship, but I'm also just grateful for the fact that she said, you know, I, I've put my time in here and now go ahead and put your stamp on it. And she just never made you feel like that. So, um, so it's been pretty incredible. Um, 
you've built up a, a pretty good program. I mean, Florida State was a, a great program in the past, but uh, between you and her, I read that Florida State is only one of nine schools to make the postseason every year this millennium. Uh, <laughs> uh, six straight ACC championships, three times to Omata Omaha, uh, and then a national championship in there as well. Um, but, you know, and so my favorite thing about, you know, talking with these different coaches is you're just – one example of an absolute dynasty that is being and been and has been built at Florida State. I mean, obviously everybody thinks about football and that's the easy one to, to yeah. go to, right? But the soccer team has won national champion. The final fours we've made it to in, in basketball, you know, Omaha with baseball, you know, golf is dominating not only the, you know, college right now, but the PGA tour yeah. they're dominating. And so um, what is it? You know, as opposed to somewhere else, like I don't want to call it any colleges, but like a, a a college that is like only known for like one sport, right? Yeah. They're they're excellent at football and everything else lags behind, or they're excellent in basketball and everything else lags behind. What is it like to be part of a not only a softball program, but just a man like every every coach on staff is just elite, right? Like yeah. everywhere you turn. Yeah, I think there's a few founding principles for success. Is um, Success breeds success, right? I mean, you yeah. get around it and not only we as coaches have a, a really good idea of what we want to do, but we're recruiting players that are successful. So those players are around other players that are successful. So um, decisions through the week when when the athletic family's hanging out is always in end for the right decision for the programs. And so, you know, I, I truly believe like we live in the same house as soccer. They have a very successful program. Our kids are very successful. They're hanging around each other. You know, I mean, of course, they're going to be college kids, but they're all driven to be the best version of themselves. And so success breeds success on that side. And then I would also say, TJ, like the fact that it's such a family atmosphere and you guys know this, like, I mean, attending school, you feel that family atmosphere here in Tallahassee. And if you can feel comfortable um, in your own skin, like you feel comfortable living here, you feel comfortable, your skills can play. So we have big time athletics, but we're a small time family feel. And that combination to me is pretty awesome because now kids feel really comfortable here and they're allowed to be themselves. And then you grow as a person um, when that foundation, that that founding um, principle for you as a person is able to happen. So I think those two elements play a big part for us. Yeah, absolutely. And Tallahassee just has that feel. And then the college yeah. just exemplifies it even more. Um, yeah. We've asked, we've asked, we talked about the different coaches that have been on and, and I like getting the different um, perspective from the different coaches um, regarding booster support and what mm -hmm. that what that means. I, I, we've had President Alford on. We've obviously talked with Ham about this and Coach Wyckoff and me and everybody else. But like, what does it do for your program specifically? Like, what what does the the support of the boosters do for you? Because I understand yeah. from a very macro level, like what it does for Florida State. But what does it do for you? Yeah, I team? think um, when you look at uh, the financial component, like every program needs the the financial help. And, and like you said, that needs to happen everywhere. But um, not only do our boosters financially support us, they're there. They're there all the time. Um, some of our biggest contributors are there in the seat every single games we play, whether, you know, it's hot out or cold out. They're there. They love to see the growth of it. They love to see the growth of the players. They love to be part of the journey. They know that game six is going to be way different than game 55 and they want to be there, be a part of it. So I think that again, goes back to you get a kid coming from Oklahoma or California or Texas, and they're going to come in and they come into this family atmosphere, but there's also this fan base that's there to support them and watch them grow and be a part of it. Um, and that's the, the people that financially contribute to us too. It's an investment. It's an investment to people and they really feel that. So um, yeah, family, I, I just keep going back to family. Yeah, and it, that's a great point. And going into this year, it's so different for everybody. We're, nobody knows how to handle it, obviously. But you, you started your season amidst the pandemic. How challenging has that been? And, you know, uh, who have you tried to lean upon? You know, we've had some sports play this year already successfully, you know, the football program. Um, and then uh, I'm sure you're talking to the other ACC softball coaches just to try and figure out how do we get through the season and how struggling has that been? Yeah, um, like everyone else trying to live in life, like um, what protocols are we following? What protocols um, 
matter like you know what leon county's protocols are and when you go to raleigh they're going to be different and then you go with the mag doctors and you do all this stuff and, and you're trying to create cohesion and family within your team and it, but you're trying not to hang out too much um we zoom everything um we take pride in you know family dinners and all that kind of stuff in our program and you can't do that anymore so now you're zooming and, and trying to do stuff and so recreating that connection piece has, has really been a challenge but it also has made being on the field fun um being on the field seems the comfort place now everything else is quite uncomfortable now it's super comfortable to be on the field because um, the only thing that's unusual right now is the mask other than that you're playing softball you're with your teammates you're you know, chanting in the dugout, you're doing all the things that are normal. So it gives you self a sense of normalcy, I guess, on, on that side. But um, I don't know, we're just living it right now. We're just starting it. We haven't really traveled airfare wise. So I don't know what that's going to be like. And um, hopefully, as we get through towards the end of our season, uh, vaccines has really kicked in and things start to, to slow down a little bit in the, the protocol piece. But uh, that part is in challenging how it's different in every state and different for every school. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about your team this year, right? Um, early in the year, um, off to some, off to a good start. I mean, you mentioned the, the Vatech, um, yeah. <laughs> there, but, but off to a good start overall, yeah. uh, talk to us a little bit about the team this year, what people have to look forward to. Cause like you said, game, game five is, is very different than game 50. And so, yeah. um, what, what do you foresee for this team? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I like, you know, we have a big roster, so how do you handle big roster? That was going to be a question mark coming in. How do you handle the pitching staff? We have five kids that can get after it in the circle. Um, how do you handle, we just played six games in four days. You know, like how do you handle the, the amount of games we're going to have to play after not playing after a year and a half or some kids two years, you know? So um, handling the competitive ups and downs of failure of our sport. So all those things will start to play out. So um, every opportunity we've had right now, which is two weekends of them, but you know, close to 10 games here, we've bounced back with the challenges and i love seeing that right now we're having some really good conversations with the players um, our upperclassmen understand what it takes and where to get there our rookies and our freshmen are, are still trying to figure it out um, everything's been you know different for their journey so our, our seniors don't really understand their journey right yet because they haven't lived in the dorms they haven't done the things that normal seniors you know would know what a freshman's going through so everything's new to us in that side so the conversations um post game have been really fun. And I appreciate that journey part. I appreciate the growth. Um, I think that's what makes the end of the season so special. And um, so um, I, I think the leadership and just the the ability to gain knowledge from your highs and lows, you know, as you get in the games and be better every time you go out, that's, that's pretty inspiring to me. Absolutely. Well, we look forward and are excited to see you guys as the season continues to go on. I do want to, I'm, I'm big on nostalgia. So I want to take it back a couple of years and yep. I know you have probably been asked about this a million times, but I'm, I'm sure it never gets old. Um, 2018 was so special. Um, yep. you know, first of all, before we even kind of talk about what everybody asked about that, that, you know, year, what is it like to, to make it to Oklahoma city? Like before we even talk about like everything that happened there, what, what is that like? Yeah. I think, um, anytime you're winning a super regional, anytime you're one of 16 teams playing in the country, you know, I mean, there's close to 200 teams going out there to play two sixty or something like that, going out there to play for a spot at the world series. And when you're playing for that spot, winning that super regional, and we've been lucky enough to do it at home and in front of our crowd, to be able to dogpile there to know you're going to Oklahoma city and you're going to be one of eight teams, you know, playing um, that moment is super special. And I don't, I know that everybody wants to win a national title, but just getting there is really tough. Getting to super regionals is really tough. And um, we want to keep the fun in that part, you know, and never want to overlook that part. That, that part has been incredibly awesome and just really have loved that. So um, I do think though, you know, going to the world series, like if you, haven't been just going for your first time it's like drinking water from a fire hose like you know it's a, it's a whole different tournament than you've ever been to before so you almost got to get there you know to feel it so we got there in 14 and we were home before we could unpack our luggage like we had two games and we're back and we're like holy crap like they're not even talking about us like we were there and they're not even talking about us but we got a taste of it then 2016 we get back and we know like we're going to stay here we're going to fight we know what this is all about and then 2018 everyone knew what the mission was and so um, I do think that's a process of getting somewhere you've never been and knowing how to get there and stay there and fight through it. So 
really proud of our understanding of that as a program and um, of our players really taking advantage of that. Yeah, the the theme that year in 2018 was, and it made us all really really nervous. But it was lose the first game and yeah, right? <laughs> keep on winning, right? That LSU series, come back, kids. Regionals, yeah. yeah, yeah. The LSU series in the Super Regionals was like, oh no, we're supposed to win this. Like we're right. supposed to go. Like now yeah. we got to win two, and, and yeah. we did. Right, we won two after that, and then you get to Oklahoma City and lose the first game to UCLA, but then yeah. uh, win the next five. Two of them against UCLA had to beat them twice, which seemed daunting, but we're able to do it. And then won both games against Washington. Um, you know, we we talk about that team and some of the stars on it. And Jesse's going to – I'm sorry. Richie's going to ask about Jesse here in a minute. But, um, man, I, I don't know why, but when – I it must have been like right when she committed to FSU or something, but like Megan King followed me. And I just was like, oh, Florida State – you know, softball commit. Like at yeah. that point, she was a freshman. It had been, yeah. you know, five years before. Like it was 2013. And so I always was like, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm the biggest Megan King fan because she followed. I don't know why. I mean, she probably shouldn't have. But anyway, can you talk about, yeah, my shoes are terrible. Can you talk about her and her leadership and, and her on that team during that yeah. run? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Kinger, she was all over the map for a while there, just trying to figure herself out like most freshmen are. And we redshirted her. You know, she just uh, didn't really know what direction she wanted to go. And nursing was always her thing. Um, and then, you know, she was just anyone that's met Megan and even over social media, like she's just in everything. Like she wants to be the most fun with, you know, for family dinners, the most fun with the team, the most fun in the weight room, the most fun in the nursing, the most fun in school. Like, you know, she's out with her friends, the most fun. So she's a hundred percent, hundred miles an hour all the time. And so it's funny how her journey ended up being to where, she was the most fun at the national championship game. She was the most comfortable. She let everyone else be comfortable. She could laugh at herself when she did something stupid. Like there was no point where nerves were a part of it. You know, she was always just really bringing everybody else into like, Hey, so what we dropped a ball. So what? let's just go play. And I think that's what really calmed everyone down is Kinger just took control and just, you know, just went after it. And um, so it's funny how in the beginning when she first got there, I'm like, I don't know if, you know, we don't know if Kinger's going to make it. Like, Here's my plan A, coach. Uh, here's my plan B. We were on the plan like F, G, H, I. I don't know. We were on so many plans. But it wasn't even the end of her freshman year. You know, she just, you know, I didn't get grades in this class. I missed this. I did this all over the place. But she was so real and so much fun to be around that that ended up playing to be a big part of us in the championship game. She was just real um, fun to be a part of, um, you know, anything that you did with her. So I'm just so grateful for her because um, – she, she endured a lot and she got after it and now she's nurse, you know, it's so cool. It's so cool. She's doing what she wanted to do and was able to give us everything she had. Yeah. She works right down the road from me. I'm in Tampa. So she's yeah. right down the road in St. Pete. Like I still see the updates on like Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. You know? Yeah. And it's also to be able to do, you know, to win a national championship and yeah. now be, you know, saving lives during the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. So absolutely. Uh, but yeah. So cool. Yeah, and it's it's wild because you you think baseball like you get to see your best player once every five days, and she was yeah. just going day after day after yeah. day, yeah. just lighting people up, mowing yeah. the sides down, a lot of fun. But what else was a lot of fun was, you know, Jesse Warren made the play of the tournament. You yeah. know, we all remember it when you know when Washington was going to bunt. She read it perfectly, made a she was horizontal, makes the catch, <laughs> uh, gets the double play at first. I'm like, man, that's that was really cool because you know, Florida State, any sport playing for a championship, I'm gonna watch it. And I'm like, I I don't know if we'll ever see a play like that again from a Florida State softball player. And then, you know, last week we see uh, you know, Josie Muffley make a phenomenal jumping yeah. tag um out. And obviously, two different, you know, the magnitude of the game was different. But my question ha has Meek called you and said, Hey, can, can you come <laughs> teach my guys some skills or can I borrow some of your infielders? <laughs> yeah. I know. Richie, that, I don't even know if you guys, you know, trolled through some of the stuff on Instagram or Twitter after that, but like it gets so sad when like such hate behind social media, you know, Josie made a very athletic play for sure. And um, when Jesse Warren made that play at, on the highest level, people kept asking me like, wow, you know, like look at that play. And I'm like, you know, are you surprised? And I can tell you anyone that's played, um, been around, anyone's on the team of coaching staff, like Jesse made those plays all the time. Unfortunately for us, we just didn't have the opportunity to be on TV. You know, like we had our little camera on outfield and we're trying to get her make these diving plays or 
I mean, she made bare hand grabs, throws to first base. And, you know, our speed of our game, when you're playing third base, it's two, six, two, seven down the line. And if that ball's bouncing twice, they're safe. Right. And so her playing that shortstop position at third base is pretty incredible. And when Josie made that play too, I'm like, man, I just wish at some point people could just be like, you know, girl or guy, like athlete, athlete. How cool was that? Just to, to have the wherewithal to make the tag while you're in the air, like just such an athletic move. And so, um, so I think it's so cool that you guys recognize that. And, you know, I just think that I just, I appreciate that, you know, from anybody. And um, I just, I think it's just so cool that Jesse kicked that off for Florida State softball. And now we're starting getting still some love, but it's also for the ACC. It's for the game in general. So it was just a really neat moment for sure. Yeah, that, that play, and it's been two years, well, almost three years, two and a half years. Yeah. That play, and so like it's not just like hyperbole or living in the moment. That's like a top five play in Florida State history. Like yeah. all Florida State. Like when you consider the the timing of it and yeah. that it was for a championship, like, you know, I'd put the game-winning goal for soccer up there. I'd put, yeah. you know, Kel Kermit's, you know, kick return for a touchdown. You know, like yeah. those are the plays like Peter Warwick's catch where they're pulling his arm down. Like yeah. that's up there. Like yeah. that's one of those, like, I don't want to say that play won a champion. That play won a championship, yeah. you know, yeah. like, so don't, you know, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I am completely with you. Um, girl guy, whatever. Yeah. Like that is just one of the all time. And again, I was saying that two and a half years ago, but now it's 2021. I'm still saying it. Yeah. like that was a top play ever. Yeah in Florida State history. Yeah. Rich, You're a sport you. fan. You get in sport moments. I don't care what it is. And there's a moment something could happen. You're on the edge of your seat. Like, oh, yeah. Holy, like what? And like, holy, did, they, did you see that? You know, like, it's just so cool. So, yeah. Do you remember when the catch happened? You know, there's probably two catches in Florida State history. And yeah. one of them on one of them's football, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I definitely appreciate it because I grew up with a sister a year and a half older than me, and she was she's you know five eleven now, so she was always taller. We played basketball. She would beat me one on one in the driveway all the time. <laughs> so I can definitely appreciate the uh, the female athletes and yeah. and watching them play. Um, and a big one coming up. You know, we we love talking rivalries on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, you guys are going to play back to back on March fifth and March March sixth in Gainesville, then Tallahassee against that school down off, you know, I ten and I ninety, and we don't we don't use their name here, but it, it's different <laughs> this year because you normally would play them, uh, you know, separate times, uh, two different weekends or yeah. weeknights. But now you're going to play them in almost a mini weekend series. How exciting is that to get the Gators back to back like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, again, because of COVID, so many different situations, they had to open up a weekend just for an SEC open weekend because of maybe COVID within their conference. So we didn't, uh, we had an open weekend. Let's go ahead and get this like a Friday, Saturday deal. Um, and I think it's awesome that it's on a weekend versus we've always played Wednesday nights um, and then a couple weeks apart. So we're having to make adjustments. Uh, what we learned Friday, we're making to Saturday. And that's always fun in a three-game series. And granted, it's only a two-game series. But uh, the rivalry is awesome for us. The um, the athleticism, the stories. You know, it's a chance to sit down and talk about the stories. Uh, we had an epic game here when AP hit a walk-off home run. And, um, you know, we'd sold out the place. And the streets sold out. People are in the parking garage. Like, this is an epic moments that you could talk about the Florida State-Florida rivalry and the game and what it means. And, I'm really excited for it. We um we've had meet on twice, and both times we've asked him about. So I'm going to bring up kind of a sore subject, but we've asked him about. Uh, well, it was worse for them. It was worse for them for sure. We've asked yeah. them about uh, the way that the baseball season ended last year, right? So yeah. it was us winning at Florida to shut down their stadium, right? The last win ever. He said history will go down with the last win ever in McKeithen Stadium will be at Florida State. Uh, didn't fare as well for us, right? We we lost our last game of the year against Florida when yeah. the pandemic struck. Um, so yeah, we're all tuned in for that one. I yeah. don't know if I can get Richie up to Gainesville or Tallahassee for one of the two yeah. games, but we've got some <laughs> we've got some payback that needs to be served up. Um, because yeah. it's been a long however many months, 10, 11 months. So um, we're excited for it and we're excited for the rest of the season. And you've got yeah. your uh got a series this weekend. Um, after a few days off, hopefully you enjoy the Time off. I know you're still working. I know it's still yeah, like practicing yeah. everything every day, but <laughs> the time, the time off that you have. Yeah. Um, but we could not be more appreciative of you coming out and and hanging hanging out with us for a few minutes tonight and just getting to chat. Uh, yeah. We had a great time. So thank you so much for for hanging with us. 
Thank you guys. I appreciate this. It's fun. It's fun to talk to people that love sport. I love it. So thanks, CJ. Thanks, Richie. Thanks, yeah, no, we're, we're down anytime. We, we just kind of do this. I mean, we do it for fun because we just like Florida State and like sports. So, no, we're, we definitely appreciate you. And uh, best of luck through the rest of the year. We Hopefully hopefully I can get Richie up to uh, OKC this year. We'll, we'll see you there. Definitely. Yeah, I'm there. Sure you guys can make Tallahassee. Let's get out and swing the bat a little bit, run around the field. Let's see what you got, huh? Oh, can I, can I take BP? Yeah, heck yeah. When, I mean, obviously, when COVID <laughs> protocol is over, you know, protocol, right. I'm, no, I'm vaccinated. I'm good. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, so I'm first. not yet. I'm not <laughs> yet. Yeah, I'm not because I don't like. I'm like I'll be the last person vaccinated, so I don't have to get embarrassed by all, of the, by all these college girls. <laughs> so I'll let Richie be the one that gets embarrassed out there. So, uh, yeah. As long as there's no video, I'm good. No, oh, video. there will be. There will be video, bro. These, these cameras are fantastic these days. Like, this is true. Yeah, yeah. There will be video if I'm there. Um, Coach, thank you so much for hanging out. We appreciate Thanks, it. Y'all. You guys take care. Go Knowles, huh? Go Knowles, Coach. Lonnie Almeida, she was awesome. I, every time we have a new coach on, I say this every week. Every time we have a new coach on, I say, oh, that was my favorite. You know, so anyway, she was really, really good. And you could tell the passion for oh, yeah. Florida State and her team and coaching. And like she just said, sports in general, great plays, like everything. The passion was so there and so evident. Um, I loved – that interview. I thought she was fantastic. So um, hopefully we'll get her on after uh, winning a national championship again this year. So we'll get yeah. her on to, to talk about that later on um, down the line. So, um, well, good stuff. Good stuff from coach. I don't know who the next coach that we're going to get on is, but I'm sure it'll be great. So stay tuned uh, as we kind of keep that, keep that rolling. Um, where do you want to start? We, we've got some notes and things. Um, well, let's start with this. Let's start with some recruiting news. Lamont Green Jr. Uh, committed to FSU over the weekend. He's a 2023 def defensive end. So not this class that we're currently recruiting. He's a junior now, but the class after. So 2023 defensive end. Um, we had, Richie, you remember when we had Lamont's dad on? We had Lamont Green Sr. on the podcast. Um, he made a prediction. Um not a prediction. He, well, you know what? I'll just let you guys listen to it. He made a comment like, you better do this type comment. Yeah. <laughs> so for those that don't remember, this is quick. I'm going to play this for you. Enjoy it. And we'll be right back. Appreciate your, your thoughts on it. Um, your son is a recruit right now <laughs> and going, going through this. What's it like uh, having gone through it once yourself, but obviously many years ago, different, different kind of circumstances, different world. Uh, what's it like to now go through it with him uh, and, and to kind of see it, see it through, I don't know, experienced eyes, but you want him to have his moment or like, what, what's that like for you? Man, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of cool in a way, you know, it's, um, cause when, you know, when I went through it, it was a whole lot different. There was no social, social media, you know, we barely even had no cell phones. You know what I mean? So it was, it was, it's just a lot different now. These kids, they get so much exposure, man, and it happens so fast. You know, one thing happens and everybody knows about it so fast. But, I mean, I think he's doing pretty well. He, um, He's one of those kids, man, he's not really he's not really into that. You know, he, um, he's a uh, he, – I would call him kind of like a blue-collar kid. Um, he goes to work. You know, he goes to the gym. He goes about his work. He goes to practice. He goes about that. He's not into – you know, uh, you know, I do the social media thing kind of, you know, I mean, uh, but he doesn't, you know, he does, he's not into that. He watches it, you know, he, he um, very quiet kid, you know, analyze it. And, and to get me and him, I told him the uh, 300, we're only the same on the football field. You know what I mean? And I think he's a little better than I was at this point. But as just far as this person, you know, I was a wild guy. You remember, I don't know if you guys remember back then, but I was the gold teeth guy with the with the hair everywhere, you know, acting crazy. My son, he's totally different. You know, what I mean, he's um he's uh he's about his business, you know. He's um he's one of those straightforward kids, um, very good student. Um uh I can't say enough positive things about him. He'll give me any problems. He um he goes to work though, he goes to work. And I think um, you know, with the recruiting part for him, it's it's a little different because everything is comparisons to your dad. 
you know, and, and, and he kind of does, you know, his own thing. And one thing I'm glad about, we play different positions because if we played the same positions, it would be a position that would be even worse, you know. So, um, but he's doing well. He's handling it well. You know, he got his favorite schools, you know, that he likes. Uh, you know, he grew up on Florida State football. So that's one big advantage that we have, you know, going into it. So I'm excited about it, though. I'm excited about it. He's still a puppy, though. You know, he still got some, still got a ways to go, but he's having a great football season right now, too. They're about three, four games into it, man, and he's having an unbelievable year right now. I just, uh, I'm just glad. I'm just glad to be a part of it. Well, all the best of luck to him, and hopefully he continues to grow. And wherever he ends up, whether that's Florida State or wherever, obviously we want him to be in the Garden and go. But wherever he ends up, hopefully he has a ton of success. And, and if, he doesn't come to the, if he doesn't come to the Garden and go, it's going to be hard for him to have a place to live when football <laughs> is not in, you know. It's bro, I was a about- God. I'm putting the pressure on, bro. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm putting the I was going to ask. We need more of that. We need that. I'm, I'm yeah. 100% no. sure who knows who sees it. <laughs> I'm putting the pressure on I him. love it. I, I got, we, we need help. Um, not just that. Is um, Man, it's just, you can't. I'm I'm a legacy, bro. you know, I'm all for the legacy thing, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, why Florida State's the greatest school in the world? We're just having a few problems right now. Why go somewhere else? Why is it just, there's no need for that. He wasn't messing around. He was no. all in on FSU, told us that, and I had that clip was a little long. I lied to you guys. I picked the wrong one. I picked the four-minute clip instead of the, the, the two. But you got to hear a great interview again. Uh he wasn't messing around, Richie. Like if Lamar, like Junior was coming here, right? Like that, there was no questions about that. Yeah, we, we thought at the time, you know, it, he's a legacy. But you know, we go back just a year ago to Brandon Jennings. You know, we thought for sure he was a lock. Um, and you know, he ends up flipping to Michigan and ends up, you know, signing with Maryland. You know, best of luck to you up there. Hope you like crab cakes and football. But you know, Lamont Green, like it, it was clear talking to his dad that. He was always going to be Florida State. Um, I, not to you know downplay the job Coach Norvell did because you know he's still a father, so he's still going to look out for his kid to make the best decision. But he clearly thinks things are going you know in a good direction at Florida State, and he's an elite pass rusher. And that we haven't had one since Brian Burns, probably, who just made made a habit living in the backfield. So it's exciting to have a guy like him, and. Uh, you know, for TJ, guys like you and I who grew up in the 90s Florida State Dynasty era, now to see the kids of, of those guys um, going through the recruiting process. And, you know, we got another one in, uh, you know, Marvin Jones Jr., a, a huge prospect down in South Florida that Florida State is very much in on. You know, is it going to be the legacies that save the program? Because that would be very fitting. Yeah, the 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 guys that made this program, right, um, being the ones that, their sons being the ones that bring it back. No, I'm all for it. I like I like the way your head's thinking about that. I hadn't really put the two and two together, but you're smarter than me, so that helps. And if, <laughs> if that's if that's the case, you know, we, we got Cromartie. We might have a whole defense in a year or two. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, man. Hopefully the coaches can re- have Zoom calls with the kids over his Wi-Fi. So that worries me a little bit. But all right, jokes, jokes uh, are plentiful here on – Double fries, no slaw. Uh, what was also plentiful is Florida. Man, hell of a transition here. Uh, Florida State hit their hundred million dollar goal. Uh, I think it was a five year goal. Uh, the the booster pledge goal that they had set. I think we hit it in three. So you know, hats off to those in the booster office, uh, President Alford and his leadership, and all those associated with that. Uh, big bread in the eight five zero, right, Richie? Hey, man, Michael Alford. You know, we, we had him on the show. I think. You know, not to toot our own horn. We were one of the first pods to have him be, on to, to be, really push first. This, this campaign. Be, be first. And uh, <laughs> talk about one of the best hires Florida State has made in recent years. It, he's already paid his own salary and then some. So it's important to mention that it's not $100 million in the bank. It's $100 million pledged, uh, much of it over you know a four or five year plan. But still, to have people that bought in after the last few seasons we've had, Michael Offord obviously has carries a ton of cachet with his name, with what he's done with the Cowboys, with Alabama, with Oklahoma, uh, everywhere he's been, he's been phenomenal. And 
you know, the, guys, this is just a start. Like this is us trying to catch up to Alabama and Clemson and Ohio State and the big dogs out there. We need more. Um, so if you can sign up to you a booster, like it, it make a one time pledge of a large amount or a small amount if that's all you can. But we're about to get an announcement for a football only facility probably in the next six months, I'd guess. It, no inside information, just based on you know what our other colleges have done with their fundraising campaigns. We are getting back on track. We're not there yet. So I'm excited because we this the hundred million dollars was to fund basketball, football, some golf things, a, a lot of different things. But the football only facility is the big one that's in there, which is huge, which we need. Uh, you think you're like, why we would need that? We're in Florida. You know, we have an indoor practice facility. If you're a 17, 18 year old kid and you're visiting five campuses, you're going to want to go to the one with the, the fanciest and shiniest toys. And that's what we're trying to get at and keep our elite in-state talent home. And this is how we do it. So phenomenal job by the boosters, Alfred, uh, David Coburn, President Th Thrasher, everyone who's been a part of this campaign. I I'm excited. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic to see. Um, we talk about this every week. If you are able to for $5 a month, right? You can sign up to be a booster. Um, you can do more than $5 a month. You don't have to be at the cheapest level, but for as little as $5 a month, you can go to boosters or booster.fsu.edu, sign up for the One Tribe campaign, and uh, let's get this program back where it needs to be. It takes everybody chipping in and doing a little bit, and we will get it back there. I don't have any any questions about that. So um, I also don't have any questions. Oh, man, tra transition two out of two, really, really good right now. But <laughs> I also don't have any questions about this basketball program in Tallahassee, which is just absolutely rolling. We were on the air live with you guys last week when the the uh, Knowles were on the court against Virginia. No big spoiler um, here, but they beat Virginia, and then they also won on Saturday. Uh, I didn't get to go. I was. I'm so pissed. I'm so mad. I was excited to take my daughter up to the Virginia Tech game. Uh, it was going to be in Tallahassee. Um, the ACC and Virginia Tech uh, had other ideas. And so Florida State goes to Pittsburgh, which so I was also upset because I was like, dang, now we're going to lose because the game's in <laughs> Pittsburgh. Uh, Florida State did not lose. 2-0 um, on the week, moved up to, a little unfair here, 11th in the AP rankings. Um, no respect. No respect should, from the voters. I mean, I think they're a top eight team in the country, you know, probably higher, um, but I, I think at least top eight. I think they'll end up being a two seed, uh, two, three uh, seed. At worst, um, but I, I think they can get a two based on how the season finishes up. Um, so without further ado, we'll talk basketball in just a minute. But the best part of the show every week, this one might be the best one you've ever done. I, I get to see these beforehand. We do some post-production editing. This is really good. So without further ado, we're looking for a sponsor for this segment, Richie Barnes's <laughs> Basketball Minute. It was a quick turnaround for the Fighting Hams this week. After defeating Wake Forest in overtime Saturday afternoon, they were right back at it on Big Monday, hosting the seventh-ranked Cavaliers of Virginia. The Tribe came in as a slight favorite, but the national talking heads were making this one out to be the ACC game of the year. Virginia and Tony the Paper Tiger Bennett squad came out feeling great, taking an early 6-2 lead in the TLC Double C, but little did they know FSU was about to treat them with the same level as respect as that punk high school kid treated Cam Newton with over the weekend. And spoiler alert, it would not end well for the Hoos. Florida State would score two unanswered touchdowns to the tune of a 14-0 run before Bennett realized he wasn't in Charlottesville anymore. From there, it was all good guys until intermission taking a 45-25 point lead into the half. That'll hurt your feelings, as the great Jeff Cameron would say. But in the second half, the Cavs head coach, Tony, would look more like his last name was Woods by the way his team would chip away at the lead, eventually getting within seven points, where Florida State would most certainly fold under pressure. Just kidding. The Tribe answered the call and made light work of a fraudulent Cavs squad who had no business being on the same court as the defending ACC champs. From there, things got classless for Florida State, putting the Vipers in to close this one out. Knowles 81, Cavs 60. Then, after some well-deserved time off, the Tribal is set to show why they actually aren't for lovers, set to host Virginia Tech on Saturday. But then, Virginia Tech put their left foot in, put their left foot out, and the Hokies got COVID. 
in an unfortunate turn of events, the tribe found out they would take this show on the road to what has been a house of horrors as of late traveling to Pittsburgh over the weekend. This one wouldn't have been close, but the Pink Panthers had a secret weapon by the name of Justin Champagny Hardaway, who would drop a cool 21. But as any Pittsburgh fan found out when they played the Browns in the playoffs, that wouldn't be enough points. The second half belonged to the good guys with four guys scoring in, in double digits, led by who other than Raekwon, 50 shades of gray. Knowles went on the road 79-72 and have overtaken first place in the ACC. With just four games left, the Knowles might just be channeling their inner Drake, looking to go back to back. As ACC regular season champs, the Tribe returns to the hardwood Wednesday night at 8.30, way past my bedtime, by the way, as they take on a tropical depression looking to bounce back from an 87 to 60 point loss at home. Ouch, Miami. Best one ever. That one's, not, I, I almost, I'm not going to do it for the people that are watching, but. I kind of want to just play it again right now. Like everybody needs to listen to that again because there's a joke in there somewhere that you missed. I don't know which one it was, but I don't give Richie a lot of credit for a lot of things. Like we argue about a lot of things on here. That is the best part of the show. That's the best one you've ever done. Um, the Virginia for lovers, the hokey pokey, the Drake, um, man, fantastic. Great job on that one. That was really good. Great job by Florida state. Not quite as good of a job as you did there, but good job, Florida State. Uh, better job, Richie Barnes. Thoughts on basketball? I know you had some ACC tournament thoughts as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a great week, obviously. You know, big Monday, top 10 Virginia in town to do what Florida State did to them after, you know, Virginia's been a pain. You know, people forget about this because they love giving, giving Tony Bennett all the love, but Leonard Hamilton has a winning record over Tony Bennett since he came to Virginia. Uh, you know, so let's not forget that, but it's always a tough game and it's normally a close, like low scoring four or five point game. Not this week, not this year. Like Florida state blew them out. Virginia tech got close. We were interviewing coach Brooke Wyckoff and we're watching the game. Like I'm more obvious than everybody else just looking up. Um, but yeah, to, to see them, Virginia got back within seven and Florida state just blew it back open. It made it clear to me, Virginia does not belong on the court, Florida State, and Florida State is the best team in the ACC this year. That's not debatable at all, in my opinion. And it brings me to, you know, we have four games left, three of them on the road. If Florida State wins the wins out, they win their second straight ACC regular season championship. And uh, whether that happens or not, the ACC announced they are moving forward with the ACC tournament in Greensboro, which... I don't know your thoughts, CJ. I think this is a terrible idea. Why are you bringing 15 teams to one small city and exposing them all to each other a week before the NCAA tournament when you could just use it to make up postponed games because every team has them? If Florida State or Virginia, let's be honest, those are the only two teams, maybe Carolina, just from a talent perspective, that could make a run in the NCAA tournament. But if Florida State has a walk-on test positive and contract chasing eliminates them from the tournament, that's not worth it. And coach Ham would never do this, but I don't think we should play in the ACC tournament. We should opt out again. Moot point won't happen. Might as well go there and win it. But what are your thoughts on that TJ? I agree mostly with that. I know we don't agree on a lot of things, but like, I think that's a <laughs> <Right>? very, <laughs> and it, I don't necessarily think that Hamilton should should opt out because again he, no, he can't be the only no. one to do that. Like Baylor's got to be thinking the same thing, and Gonzaga's got to be thinking the same thing, and Alabama's got to be thinking the same thing. And so, uh, yeah, I agree. No, let's let's not that. let's not put Alabama in this conversation. They are they are well, fraudulent that, as can be for sure. But that conference is terrible. So like yeah. I mean they're you know they're no, the I, I, I just say, I get it. <laughs> I just want to say that they do not belong in the category with Florida State, Gonzaga, oh. Michigan, Baylor. So. Yeah, I, I I don't know. And I've thought about this. When the ACC tournament gets announced, if you're you – know, ter- who's the worst team in the ACC, right? Like, um, There's a lot of bad teams this year. Uh, somebody absolutely terrible. Like if you're – Georgia Tech, right? Who just yeah, blew Virginia. Miami out. Yeah. Well, if you're Miami, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Perfect you, example. <laughs> are you even going – like are you even risking COVID to go play Virginia or Florida State and get your head beat in? That's a good point. Yeah, that's so, a good point. So what happens – when three or four, yeah, NC State, yeah, that's right, Hunter, suck it. Uh, <laughs> what happens when three or four of these teams do opt out? What does the yeah. ACC then do? Now, what I would be 
more okay with, and I don't know what your thoughts are here. I'm about to find out. What if they just took the top four teams and just played two games um, earlier in the week? That way it's not, you know, instead of playing like Saturday, Sunday, your two games, play them earlier in the week, like Monday, Tuesday, when you would normally, you know, kind of have those days off or they'd be the early round games, but play it earlier in the week. That way, if there is some kind of outbreak, you've got like a week and a half before the tournament starts, you'd, you'd be fine there because it'd be 10 days play, you know, I don't even know who the top four teams, but play Virginia Tech and Florida State and then whoever against Virginia and then, you know, whittle it down. Florida State, Virginia play each other. You crown an ACC champion and you roll with that. To me, that's probably the best way to do it because once you have teams like Miami and NC State and these different bad teams opting out, how does it does does everybody just move up a seed or like does the team that they were playing just move on or like how does that work? You know, do you get a better seed because other people opted out or? Do, does Virginia just then get like four buys in or does Florida State get like four buys into it? So my idea would be to just make your conference tournament smart or get rid of them. But I, you know, the conferences want the money. Like they're not going to get rid of them. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what happens, um, but I'd be completely yeah. okay with there being no conference tournaments. I I, I mean, Ham's not going to be the only one to opt out. Uh, but yeah. if other people were to do it, like, you know, maybe like if Gonzaga was to do it, then, you know, Baylor does it. And then maybe we say like, yeah, we're out of here. You know, we'll go hey, to the there, it's not unprecedented. Coach K was the first coach to opt out of the NCAA tournament last year before it got canceled. So th there is some precedent. And as far as I'm concerned, Coach Ham holds as much weight as Coach K does th these days in the ACC. But to your point, yeah, if you want to bring the top four teams, that's fine. And I get the whole, oh, well, uh, you know, if Miami, who has no chance whatsoever to make the tournament, if they were to win the tournament, they get a bid. It's not worth it like what what are we doing here and at the same time when if you do have all 15 teams from the ACC show up do you think these players that are on the you know 10 11 12 seed team in the ACC are going to take covid protocol seriously and not go out to the club with their friends or not go to a frat party or not you know go get exposed cuz they don't care they don't they have nothing to lose but these Florida State players that have to share a locker room potentially share a court with these guys they have everything to lose especially when you're a selfish Florida State fan like myself. We only get Scotty Barnes for one year. It's MJ Walker's last year. Raekwon Gray, the way he's playing, it might be his last year. I don't want to be robbed two years in a row of a chance to compete for a national title. So as a fan, I'm selfishly really against this. Um, but we hope for the best because we know everybody follows the money. Everybody needs the money after this past year. So the tournament will be played. All 15 teams will be there provided the testing allows that. Um, I just don't like it at all for any major conference. I get it for like the Ivy League when you have like teams like, you know, Harvard and Princeton and Yale, the, when it's awesome if you go to the NCAA tournament, even knowing you're going to lose the first round. Well, we're Florida State fans. We're spoiled now. We know we're expecting a Sweet 16. So we don't want that to be ruined the week before. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going on record saying Elite Eight or bust, and then anything happens from there. But I, Sweet 16 is not enough for me this year, just for what it's worth. Um, now I'm with you, and I think that it, it's something that has worried me for a while um, when the NCAA came out with their protocols for how you what you have to do to get into the tournament. Um, from one – sport you know one team on the hard court to the other women's basketball last night with yes. an incredible upset over number three louisville um you tweeted the group or you texted the you, you group texted us and said like hey women's basketball is about to win against number three louisville and i was just like what yeah i didn't even know what was going on so did you catch the tail end of that game no, man, I was so upset. I don't know what's going on with my iPhone. Like, I have all the ACC channels. I, I pay my DirecTV sub. Uh, I'm never late. And I would try to play it on my phone. It wouldn't play. So I'm following the GameCast the entire way for like the last 10 minutes. And shout out to my buddy, uh, Chris Rochester, who has won our gambling picks a few times and come on with us. He actually sent a text to our group chat saying, L let's go coach Brooke. So I immediately know. Let me check the score. I'm like, oh. We're up by two against number three, Louisville. They're 20 and one. And then we're up by four. Then we're up by six. Then we're up by eight. I'm like, this might actually happen. That's what I texted TJU, uh, Harlan, the producer, uh, Brian, our graphics guy, and everyone else in the group chat and said, man, we, we got to get a tweet ready. We're, we're about to take down the number three team in the country. And sure enough, they did. And it was awesome. I know you did a great job cutting up a video. 
uh, of Coach Brooke Wyckoff saying, you know, I, I hope I make Coach Sue proud. Well, there's no doubt in anyone's mind you made her proud by taking down the number three team in the country. Yeah, I've got that video queued up. We'll watch it real quick. Yeah, it meant so much. And just like the story you just told, I, she is the best. She really is. I mean, Coach Sue has impacted the lives of so many people, and she does it day in and day out. Not only her players, but people in the community, our fans. Uh, she's just special. And so she they're very big shoes that I had to fill, but I'm truly honored that she entrusted me with this program that she has built really uh, over the past 25 years. Um, and she's been a mentor to me since I was 17 years old, has taught me the most important things in life, uh, so much about coaching, but even more just about how to treat people, how to be successful in anything just based on your character. And so, yes, uh, just to know that she thought I was up to the task was a huge honor. Um, and, and I hope that uh, I'm doing her proud. <laughs> um, I had to scramble to make that. I had both kids running around <laughs> and screaming and Richie's like, there's 15 seconds left. Fortunately, um, Louisville kept fouling at the end. So I had a little bit more time. I was able to get it up real quick. And yeah, I actually just, as soon as we started talking about it, I actually just put it up on here so that we can put it up, but I didn't have plans to play that video. But when you brought it up, I, it takes like, two minutes to upload. So I was like, I hope Richie just keeps talking so that I can get this uploaded <laughs> and get it on there. So um, she was fantastic. That, what a great win for the FSU women's program. Um, really, really impressive. And hopefully that kind of sparks them to continue um, their upward trend this season. Um, we talked about this quickly with Lonnie on, but baseball won their opening series. Uh, lost on opening day. Not the first time that's happened, uh, but then came back to win the next two games meet talked about that meet talked about how uh guys you know as a fan you love it as a coach you hate it because guys are just making dumb mistakes and they're too amped up for opening day Knowles settled down on saturday and uh got the i'm sorry Knowles settled down on sunday and won both games there um so they're two and one to start moved up to number nine um in the rankings so a top 10 team uh did you see our rivals to the to the south and east, lost two games to Miami. Um, so Florida has a worse record than us. Like they picked up 20, you know, losses in their new stadium, losses in their old stadium. They, uh, I bet they're sick of playing other teams in this state. So always good to see when, when they go down. Yeah. Uh, they, they are loaded this year and they deserve that number and ranking to start the season, but it's still a beautiful thing to see. And it sucks when it's like another rival that has to take a series from them because, you know, you want to talk crap to Florida, but you got to give the same credit to Miami. Um, but at the same time, you know, Florida is the most arrogant family. They think they're like baseball royalty because they won one national title. So that to see them go down in their brand new ballpark and the one catch from the center fielder, I don't know if you saw it from Miami, just made an amazing diving catch and stared down the entire Florida dugout. I almost wanted to put over, put on a turnover chain at the moment, but there's no way I could ever do that. But it, that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, no, absolutely. When those two teams get together, it is usually tough to find one of them to root for. It is not in baseball. Baseball is, yeah. is very easy <laughs> um, to pick one or the other. Um, golf had a good weekend as well. Yes. Uh, they won the tournament that they were in. Uh, Oklahoma was in the field. Um Number one ranked Oklahoma and Florida State beat them by seven strokes. Like we talked about, Florida State is not only dominating the PGA Tour, but dominating college baseball as well. I think it's about time we got Coach Trey Jones back on the pod to chat with him a little bit deeper. During season is going to be probably be tough, but I know it shouldn't be that tough, right? Like it's golf, right? Like he should be able to come on like during a tournament, right? Like what, you know, <laughs> it's not the same as uh ham or whatever so yeah, I mean, we'll, yeah we'll try and get him back on soon and he um, he mentioned that that this was the most talented field so that florida state hosted the tournament um and he said it was probably the most talented field they've ever hosted and it was wild because they did not host it at their new jack nicholas golf course they hosted it at golden eagle which if you're spent time in tallahassee and you're a golf fan you're well aware of that course uh it, the players are not used to it they practice at you know, their home course, the, the brand new Jack Nicholas design. Uh, but they went to golden Eagle. So I know Trey took him out there the week before to get used to the course. 
And yeah, Oklahoma, number one in the country, Florida State out. They beat him by seven strokes at the end of the tournament. The, uh, Oklahoma State was also there. They're number 12 in the country, and they were actually closer to Florida State than Oklahoma was. But, you know, John Pack, you know, we talk about Brooks Kepka, Daniel Berger, Jonas Blix. Uh, Trey Jones is really getting a lot of great players on the tour. Man, John Pack might be the next big thing. And he shot a 67 on Sunday, five under par, uh, finished in second place overall for the tournament. And just, man, I, I know uh, not many people care about golf, but uh, as a guy who wishes he could have played golf in college, uh, you know, I, I love seeing that stuff. Absolutely. Um, and like I said, we've talked about this, but really all of the, uh, all of the athletic programs are, are absolutely thriving right now. And so you love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, Florida state plays Miami Wednesday at eight 30 on the road. And then UNC on Saturday on the road. So hopefully another two and a week. For that'll, the that's the game right there. If they can beat UNC, I think we have our second straight ACC regular season championship. Um, you never want to chalk up an ACC road win as an automatic thing, but Miami's down, man. And North Carolina, that's the game that we might be an underdog going to that game, despite how much better we are than them to this point, because we've not performed there well historically. But I will be up watching that. I'll be excited as I was for the when Sam Howell and UNC came to Doke this year. Yeah. Florida State then finishes out with Boston College next Wednesday, definitely past Richie's bedtime, 9 p.m., and then Notre Dame, uh, the last game of the year. So exciting times, exciting stuff. Softball gets kicked back off later this week. Baseball still rolling. Women's hoops coming off of their big win last night. Exciting times, and spring practice is just around the corner. So stay tuned here. Of course, we'll keep you up to date on all of it. Um I haven't seen many other shows getting all these coaches on too. So we'll keep you up to date on uh, what's going on in Florida state land with the, the best and the brightest, right? There's a little cliche for you. Uh, any shout outs, Richie, before we get out of here? Um, no, none this week. Uh, actually, well, yeah. Shout out Trey Jones, shout out uh, Brooke Wyckoff and shout out Mike Neat, like and ham, like uh, all the Florida state coaches that took care of business this weekend, shout them all out. Cause they're, they've all been on the podcast. So, uh, Shout out your Cromarty internet. It looks like it just went out. Um, <laughs> oh, you froze. I'm gonna take your take your camera. Oh, there you are. You froze for a second. You said shout him all out, and then you just froze. But I ain't. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not editing that, so it's all good. Meet Ham, um, Brooke, and uh, Trey Jones. Shout them all out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't. I don't know that I have any shout outs either. Uh, shout out. Uh, it's not out yet, but I mean, I'll, I'll mention it really quick. I, I started a new podcast called bourbon on a budget with uh, Brendan Sinone of Knowles two, four, seven, and my buddy Ben, um, that should be debuting a week from tomorrow. So I think that's March 6th. Um, so check that out. If you like bourbon, whiskey, scotch, whatever, we're not going to do much scotch, but you can at least get into it. Bourbon on a budget. Um, other than that, I don't have anything. Shout out my kids. Um, I think, did you pick the song last week? Did I pick the song? I picked like the past four songs, so you, you got to get one or two here. I got one. I don't know what it is, um, but I'll play it to get out of here. But I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to call it on the air. Um, we'll be back next week. Should be back on Sunday next week. Actually, we'll yeah. definitely be back on Sunday next week. Monday is my seventh wedding anniversary. Oh, so shout out my wife. Shout out my wife so I don't get in trouble. <laughs> well, no, that's next week. So I take that shout out back. I'll shout her out next week. Uh, Monday is my seventh wedding anniversary. So we're done with the Monday night interviews uh, for a little bit. We'll be back on Sunday night um, between 6 and 8. I don't know what time, but between 6 and 8 p.m. And we will see you guys there. Um, make sure to follow us everywhere on social media that you can. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Double Fries Pod. And we will see you guys next week. Go Knowles.